Welcome to the first of uh, what John wants to call a fireside chat. Now, why did he come up with that title? <laughs> well, he came up with that title because we have here a fireside, and what we're going to do is have a chat. <laughs> well, the other option is we have a, an Anne Summers party with these. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so today, what are we going to chat about? We're going to talk about wands. Yes, we have many wands. Comedy <laughs> wands, ordinary ones, and in fact we're going to start off with an ordinary wand. It's, um, it's very small, that one. It's a rather small one, but I want to show you something that you can do. Um, I should think that every schoolboy learns the gag of doing, holding a, a wand apparently in mid-air by doing this or holding your wrist, and of course that's all How you're are you doing. How are you actually doing that? Oh, I see. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, there is another way of doing it, which is simply to put it in your hand, roll it to the end of your fingertips, and there it is, perfectly balanced. Now, um, if you haven't come across this, there are no threads, no magnets, or anything else. It's entirely impromptu, and all you're doing is rolling it to the end of your fingers. Now, if I turn my fingers like that to the camera, you'll see that these two Wait fingers... For it looks very good, that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks incredibly good. But they're actually pulling it towards you, and you splay these fingers as wide as possible. So there we are. Now... John has some interesting Oh right, yes. Well, yeah. Uh, this is Ken De Corsi showed me a couple of things. And if I've got children um, before the show, you know, occasionally I give them a little wand and we would play or a pencil or anything like that. The little one's ideal. Obviously, in a magic show, you've got the uh, the one like this, and you say, "Can you do this?" And That's good. A lot of people know this one, and it's just you take the take the pencil between your thumbs like that, and this thumb rotates around that one. And round there, you pick it up very quickly once you get the get the general idea. There's a second one where, if even if they know the first one, they probably won't know this one. Where you put your hands back to back like this between these two, and you go like that. Hmm. <laughs> it looks it looks quite magical actually, but you go like that. Do you know, I think these would be a great lead-in to anything? You could, but you could even do it as, as like, this is how you wave a magic wand. <coughs> do, I, I mean, I do the bit in my, my show where we do different wand moves again to do the thrust and the parry and like it's a, a, a sword. Then you could add another bit, I suppose, where you say, well, try this one. And again, that one is, it, it's the same move, really, except you're doing it with your, your two index fingers and this index finger goes through this one round and rotates round like this. It's, well, it looks uh, really good. And, and done, done fast, it will... That's not like that. Done fast, you done, can done make fast. a complete mess of it. You yeah. can do, yeah. Yes. It's, 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 it's <laughs> fine, it's fine. Uh, but we're not making any cuts in this, because it is just an informal fireside chat. So, uh... <laughs> do, you think, do you think you've done this one to death now? Yeah, I think that's enough, enough of that one. Right, okay. There we are. And, so there uh, we are. That's what you can do with an ordinary magic wand. I don't think I've seen this one before. What do you call this one? Ah, this is, <laughs> this is, a, this new is thing. a brand new on the market. This <laughs> is called a... Breakaway wand. <clears throat> Breakaway, you say? But, <laughs> well, yes. Why is that? <laughs> well, you won't believe this, John, but it falls apart in your hand and there's lots of hilarity. Oh, right. <laughs> but most uh, breakaway wands don't look like this, mainly because they're, you see them in sections. This one, though, is seemingly fairly solid. These were, I think, how they originally started. I don't know whether you can see this. I'll bring it over to the camera. But you've got a little section here which there is a groove here, and then you've obviously got the string running the wall the way through. Well, let's see the full effect, in case anyone doesn't know it. So, you choose your victim. We're going to have to stop in a moment because we have... I'm going to have to stop in a moment because this is a pick -up. So, here we are back again after the... Um, <laughs> a slight intermission there. Parcels going out all the time. So we were just <laughs> explaining these were the original. Oh yes, yes, I never got to see what the effect was. Well, these are the original um, breakaway ones with the with the little slit here, and that means that when you choose your victim, you can yeah. give it to them, and as you do so, you press down on the little piece, <laughs> and of course, the whole it's thing falls to pieces in their hand. It's nice. But the nice thing about this one is that you can use it as a solid one beforehand. That's the way they're usually used. You yeah. simply tighten the. Nice. The piece of string, but the ones that we've got, they have this extra piece, so you can use it either way. It doesn't matter which you do. Of course, Nick from Supreme used to tighten all these up before they went left out. They uh, used, used to tighten the end like this. 
and he sent them all out completely rigid and we got so many back. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the back of the room had no idea that they were supposed to be like that. And he kept saying, well, they're loose, I can't send them out like that. So, uh, but that's nice, I like the extra piece. I think it is nice. I mean, I actually glued one of these together once, because kids were, were, were familiar with it. Right. I, I glued one together and had one that was separate. Um, I mean, that is so, the only problem with this, that, that a lot of children are... I, I actually I had, one, had one that looked like one, so it's the, I, the pieces were slightly stepped like that. And I would bring it out and give it the kid and it wouldn't break. And I'd take it back and... <laughs> and it, while the coyote, you know, in, in, in Roadrunners, and went, why won't it work? And then eventually you could... With this one, it'd be even better because it'd look more like it when you switched it for it. Yes. You could bring it out rigid again and give it to the kid. Me buying two, of course, but... Ooh, yeah, two. two. <laughs> yeah, two. Uh, right, next one, we've got a springy wand. Mm. And this is about as simple as they come, but... Uh, in the hands of someone who really knows what they're doing, and the person I'm thinking of is Yozo Bozo. I say, I've got one of these, but I don't think I've actually used it yet. Well, Yozo uh, does a lovely routine with it on his DVD called Milking. And the whole idea of the Milking DVD is that you get as much out of it as you possibly can, and yeah. any effect. So he takes this, and whenever he's not looking, the wand flops over. And of course the children notice this immediately. As soon as they draw his attention to it, he looks at it and says there's nothing the matter with it and he builds this up and builds it up so the children are actually screaming at him and saying look 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 and whenever he turns around that's the moment that the wand chooses to behave completely and of course you can finish it off with it hitting you in the face <laughs> um, for extra comedy but there is one thing I'm about these this. there are there are some of these the tension of the spring is all important if you've got one which is too tense it will not flop even when you're holding it at the base. Yeah, and you good. want one that's actually going to flop over almost of its own accord. It's the way to the ends of these are metal ends, aren't they, so they? Yes. The way to the ends. It's these quite are made in Germany, actually, in a, a very, very nice quality. So you can do all this. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But if you, if you want to have a look at someone really using it well, then do look at um, well, Yozo Bozo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, because mine's still in my drawer, I'm afraid. I must, must uh, admit. Yozo Bozo's <laughs> DVD milking. Right, so there we are. That's the springy one. Right, we've been getting down the... Uh, what's this one, then? Oh, I, I know this one. This? This is the, uh, the <clears throat> tipple topple, is it? The tipsy one. Tipsy, wand. tipsy. And these used to be made for us by Len Blees. Well, Len is no longer around, but um, he used to also make them, and probably the best exponent I've seen of this is Terry Herbert. Um, if you watch Terry on um, Magic for Under Fives, a DVD we did with him a few years ago, he uses this absolutely beautifully. And you can explain that um, you break the wand, or you drop the wand on the way here, and you hope that it isn't broken. And as you peer at it, of course, one of the ends drips <laughs> down. You never see it. I mean, that's the same with a lot of these ones. It's look, don't look, see. Look, don't see. So the, yeah. the children actually are the ones who see it. When your attention is eventually drawn to this, and you say, well, I'll have a look and see. And of course, as you're doing so, you simply bring it back. I mean, up. That thing I was doing there, you showed me that with it screwing the end on. What's that? When you, when you were doing the thing where you, you, you screw the end on and you, 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 you that's, that's right. You know? Oh, okay. And, and, then, and the other end originally. drops I mean, down. I did, I did the yes. demonstration for this, and I think. You showed me a great little move where it was you were actually sort of you, you screwed this end on. So yeah, that's I forgot more about that. Yeah, and the other end drips down. And the other end it up. I mean, the the difficulty with a lot of these things is knowing how to finish it. And I think Terry finishes it with uh, as he's peering at it, oh, and of course it catches him right under the nose. He doesn't quite do that. That was a certain. Oh. Yeah, that's that's not like it. Thank you, Terry. Hope you're not watching this. <clears throat> so, um, so there is the tipsy wand, and moving on to a new wand. Just in case you thought there was nothing so new in the So this is hold it between you. That would be hard, actually. Oh, yes, yeah. it would. But this is um, no. This is one by Gary Dunn. There's a little battery in the bottom here and you get this nice flashing effect. It's probably a little too bright for you to see this, but there are about six different uh, settings on here. This actually is ideal for magic colouring because you've got all the different colours flashing around, so you can get the child to wave that over the uh, picture that's going to become coloured. But as I press the end, you'll see that this changes. So we've got some nice slow changes there. That's a static one, flashing red. 
This is great. If you're driving home late at night after doing a gig, <laughs> you could. Uh, there's a car in front of you that won't get out of the way. You simply turn this on and put it on the dashboard, okay. and they'll probably pull over quite quickly. And I didn't give you that tip at all, and um, I'm not prepared to be prosecuted for imitating a policeman. Thank you. Um, you're old enough to uh, decide whether you want to do that yourself. And then we've got green, and back to back to nothing. But nice visual wand, great for magic painting. That's interesting. Now, <clears throat> you're wondering what this is. Yes, I've, I've actually seen these on the stand and never, never dared ask. Well, uh, is it just sort of? Uh, oh, there's so, so much more to it than that, John. Is this so, really? Uh, no. <laughs> so basically, you are going to. If you, you put your hand out, it makes a nice whacking noise. See, and it doesn't hurt at all. No. No, it didn't. <laughs> it really didn't. However, <laughs> let me just issue a little caveat here. You do not do this to the child. No, I, I, I've heard of magicians doing that from parents who put oh. me saying he was a magician whacking all the kids on the head with a wand. And it isn't going to look good. No, it's, it's not good for rebooking, not is it? Look great. So, this is the child does it to you. You can be holding a bag or something. The, yeah. And they whack you across just the. Just don't give the them that one straight after. Or, or you could have a substitute of this with a piece of lead inside, so once they've got used to the fact that it doesn't hurt at all, you could switch the other one in and have a lot of fun that way. <laughs> but anyway, that is a, a whacker wand. Uh, looks funny as well. Where have we got to? We're um, on to the, we've got a, a measle teasel. A measle teasel. This was the uh, creation of Tommy James, which we put out earlier. You can watch this actually on the, on the uh, no, website. People rave about this one. Well, it's uh, very it's, simple. Uh, it's just an instant change from a plain black and white one to suddenly you've got spots all over it. And if you blow on it, the spots disappear. You can see an in-depth, um, in-depth, more detailed version of this on our video demonstrations. But this is, I think this is particularly nice. You can hold it. You also both have showed me an idea with this as well, with, with the releasing um, confetti uh, or little punchings out from a, a, all right. a little hole punch. Oh, so, as in the white. As in the white. white so as you, as you blow the spots off, you you oh, that's nice. you, you you release it and, you, and the spots fall and to they the all floor fall down. at the end. So you'll do your little thing, and all the all the spots will cascade oh, like that. and flutter to the floor. I mean, you can hole punch, you can punch out. Yeah, that's good. Those and and you don't, they're, they're actually the right size. As yeah, well. they are. They're perfect. You don't so, have to do it. I'm suddenly. sure it was Jose Bowser showing me that. So we, I think I'm, He's featuring a lot in this, isn't he? Yeah, he's... Well done, Jose. <laughs> um, it sounds like Charles doing parcels next door from the noise that's coming through. Yes, she is. But you don't have to do this. Your order's been dispatched. <laughs> Sorry. 24 hours. That's no, all right. <laughs> um, this is, uh, you don't have to do this um, so that it is instant. You can say to the children, if you see the spots reappearing, then let me know and just do it very, very slowly. You don't see it, and by the time again that your attention's drawn to it, of course, they're back to, uh, back to normal. So that's the measle teasel oh, one. <laughs>